Gracious God, out of your love and mercy, you breathe into us the breath of life, creating us to serve you and our neighbors. Call forth our prayers and acts of kindness, and strengthen us to face our mortality with confidence in the mercy of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me, and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness, and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach the restorer of streets to live in. Here ends the first reading. This evening's psalm is Psalm 103, verses 8 through 14. <coughs> Lord, you are full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. You will you not always accuse us, us, nor will you keep your anger forever. You have not dealt with us according to our sins, nor repaid us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens, heavens are high above the earth, so great is your steadfast love for those who fear you. As far as the east is from the west, so far have you removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion, compassion for his children, so you have compassion for those who fear you. For you know well how we are formed. You remember that we are but dust. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, At an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. 
See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see. We are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
We pray that you will open the eyes and ears of our hearts so that we listen to your voice and walk as people of faith. We pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from the triune God be with us all. Amen. I remember in 2018, as I was preparing to go to church to preach on Ash Wednesday, it was, of course, Valentine's Day, Feb 14. But just before I went to church, heard about the Parkland shooting. It was a challenge to talk about, preach about love on such a day and combine it with the theme of Ash Wednesday. A day when you are reminded of your true origins, the true purpose of entire life. You are dust. And to dust you shall return. What a powerful way of being reminded every time on Ash Wednesday that we are but dust. Nothing. Absolutely worth nothing. But between that beginning of life and to dust we shall return to the end of life. There is that beautiful period called Grace, gracious gift of life, life itself. And the purpose God has given us, that gift of life, is love. And preparing for the sermon today to hear once again about the shooting that took place in Kansas City. Imagine a context where people are in the mood of celebration, mood of celebrating love. We are suddenly brought down to earth and asked to wrestle with this question once again. What ultimately is the meaning of life? What is the gift of love and life mean to us today? In the first reading that we had from the prophet Isaiah, we look at those words which Jesus repeats later during his own sermon, his own Nazareth manifesto. The words that speak about the content, the entire content of the gospel. Is this not to do justice? Is this not the meaning of love? To break the yoke of slavery, to break those yokes of oppression, to walk in justice, in faithfulness. What does the Lord require of you, O mortal? But to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. Micah 6, 8. So those words that keep on reminding us that there is a purpose God has given for each one of us. Love, love, and love. Justice, justice, and justice. These two are not two words, but they are one word. Even that hyphen is too long between these two words. It's one built together. There cannot be love without justice and there can be no justice without love. When we look at this as the crux principle and the other lessons that we read today, what seems very obvious is as human beings we try to get away from this truth. We would love to sing praises to God and say, God, you are such a wonderful God. You are so gracious. You are the one who forgives. 
We fail to listen to that voice speaking back to us. What does that mean? I don't need to be reminded that I am your God. God does not need reminders as to how gracious God is, how good God is. God's word to us today is this. Remember that covenant. Remember the baptism. Remember that I am your God even before you were born. I am your God till the very end, even after we pass on. That's the beauty of our Christian faith. The words that will be repeated today, remember you are dust and to dust you shall return, is only two significant points in our own lifetime. But the time we have from God is before we were born and even after we pass on, God gives us that rest and peace in Jesus Christ. That is the meaning of our understanding of what we are as bodies. God is not happy just when we sing praises to God. But when we remember the covenant, the baptismal covenant, we repent and return to God. There cannot be only repentance. And we cannot say, let me seek forgiveness just from God. When we come to the time of confession of our sins, we are reminded once again, we confess in the presence of God and one another. Be mutually open for correction, to retrieve our steps back to the cross, to repent and receive that gift of forgiveness. This whole period of Lent, in our acts of piety, can conquer with, continue with acts of love and justice. That would make a true repentance, a true return to the cross, the path of God. May the peace that passeth all understanding keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. Amen.
We believe in one God, the Father, Father the Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God for God, light for light, true God for true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again, again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Friends in Christ, today with the whole church, we enter the time of remembering Jesus' Passover from death to life. And our life in Christ is renewed. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance, and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joy in communion with God, to love one another, and to live in harmony with creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God, our neighbors, and creation, so that we do not enjoy the life our Creator intended. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a discipline that contends against evil and resists whatever leads us away from love of God and neighbor. I invite you, therefore, to this discipline of Lent, self-examination and repentance, prayer and fasting, sacrificial giving, and words of love, strengthened by the gifts of word and sacrament. Let us continue our journey through these 40 days to the great three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy One, we, we confess, confess that we have wandered far from you. We, we have, have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets, prophets in our own day. We have squandered our merits of grace. We, we have, have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us again of your love, and help us to love our neighbor. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you, and all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God comes to you again and again, and gathers you under wings of love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. God journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes be a sign of our mortality and penitence, reminding us that only by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ are we given eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, 
our Savior and Lord.
gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts towards those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care, and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give him thanks, thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. You bid your people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast. Renew our zeal in faith and life and bring us to the fullness of grace that belongs to the children of God. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending name.
strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, accompany our journey through these 40 days. Renew us in the gift of baptism, that we may provide for those who are poor, pray for those in need, fast from self-indulgence, and above all that, that we may find our treasure in the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us receive the blessing. You are children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, bless you this day and always. Thanks be to God. God.